was kind of the message you left the team with uh, at the end of last season? Obviously, a bit of disappointment there uh, at the end of the year, um, but you did only fall twice on the year to both the national finalists, mm -hmm. national championship finalists, right. and uh, had a, a record-breaking season for a number of players and, and, and a lot of uh, positives. So what was the message you left the team with? Oh, just to, to celebrate exactly what you said, how great of a season it was. It's probably the best season in, in uh, Bulldog volleyball history, at least in the 13 years I've been around here. Um, and it's hard because when it ends like it did, it's hard to remember all those things that were accomplished and all those special achievements that individuals had, all the awards and uh, records that were broken. Um, but you gotta, you gotta look back and appreciate the journey. You know, we as coaches always talk about it. it's about the journey, not the destination. Um, and really with that group, it was about the journey and their maturation through the year. And, you know, to go through a conference like ours without dropping a match, um, to repeat as the tournament champions for the NSIC tournament, um, those kind of things, it just tells you how special of a year it really was. And, you know, it was one of those nights in that regional final where we didn't play as well as we would have liked and Southwest played very, very good volleyball and were tenacious and deserved to win the match. And, you know, you just got to tip your cap and that's that's the nature of sport. Sometimes that's going to happen and, you know, if you won every time it would be boring. There would be no challenge involved. So as disappointing as it was, I just told them to make sure they really appreciate it you know, all the hard work they put in and what it got them. Uh, obviously, this is a team that returns a lot uh, from an offensive standpoint. Uh, you have Ashley Hinch, your senior setter, who just earned the NSIC Preseason Player of the Year Award, and she, she leads a group of four All-Americans that return offensively. Mm -hmm. How do you see her continuing to improve uh, in her role as now a senior leader, as well as uh, the rest of those key returners on offense? Yeah, we, we need Ashley to, to be that ultimate quarterback for our offense and continue to run a very smart um, you know, offense for us and, and keep the other side on their toes, distribute the ball well, distribute the ball evenly. I think one of the strengths of our team last year was how balanced we were and how we were able to keep everyone involved. Um, depending on who was hot that night, we could go to them or we could go away from them. And Ashley just needs to take it that next level again and be a difference maker on the court. You know, our first couple of years, she was a part of the ride, but she was kind of learning. And now last year, she was really more of a difference maker. And we need her to do that again. Uh, you know, the other girls that are returning from an offensive standpoint, it's the same thing. They've got to carry their load. They've got to do what they're capable of doing, knowing that teams know who they are going into matches and are going to find try to find ways to slow them down so they've got to raise their bar a little bit as well and and learn how to be more effective with um, game plans designed to slow them down and then you got to hope that some of your your new blood can come in there and fill some of those gaps that you're going to have uh, obviously people know the names of monica turner sydney mock uh, mariah sharp stepped in big last year who also of the returners is there anybody you see that will step in and play a bigger role this year offensively well it's a little early to tell and know that for sure but certainly the hope would be someone like a taylor Wisbroker would be ready for that challenge uh, she had a really good spring athletically she's in the best you know shape we've seen her in since she's been a part of our program she's really jumping out of the gym she's long she's physical and so now if she can translate some of that out of the volleyball court and, and do what she's capable of. I think she's got a chance to make some noise. Uh, Allison Oley, who was a redshirt uh, freshman last year, so she's in her sophomore year from a volleyball standpoint. You know, again, a physical kid, 6'2", jumpy, strong, uh, quick, uh, you know, from a blocking standpoint. We need her to, to you know, kind of figure it out and do some of those things on the court as well. I think those are t probably two of the bigger names that we would expect something from this year. All right, defensively, not too many teams can say they return four All-Americans, and that, but they lose one that might be the biggest one. It's Absolutely. The, the, uh, probably the most decorated libero in the history of Bulldog volleyball, Julie Rainey, graduates. Mm -hmm. uh, who do you see stepping into that defensive role, and is there a competition here to see who gets that libero position? There's absolutely competition, and it's not just about the libero. You know, we lost Katie Ledwell, who was a primary passer. We lost Alyssa Kajawa, who played middle back defense and, and passed for three rotations. So we've got a lot uh, to make up in that part of our, our team and our, you know, our offense. Uh, we need Kelly Madison, Teal, uh, Sheena, those three as returning BSs have to fill some of that vo void. You know, you've got people like Megan Norby or our incoming um, players with uh, Aaron Schindler. Any of those people can step in and fill some of that void. It's just a matter of who's going to go out there and get the job done. Right now it's a little early to know that for sure. 
Um, certainly you would hope some of those people can get that job done to where we can get the ball to Ashley often enough to continue to run a high, high level offense. Uh, let's talk a little bit. You touched on Aaron Schindler, but you're, you have three uh, first-year players. Do you see any of those three making an immediate impact here? Well, Emily Torvey is our uh, is an incoming setter here. So with Ashley being back for her senior year, really there's no, you know, knock on wood. There's no immediate need for her to be ready to play. Certainly, she's got to train and prepare for that opportunity. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. But, you know, in the long run, our hope is to redshirt her and, and have her there for the future years when she'll be able to take the reins over of the program. Uh, Aaron Schindler is someone who we expect to come in right away from a ball control standpoint and have an impact. And then offensively on the outside, she's got the arm, the volleyball IQ to be able to do some things successfully. It's just a matter of how she can make that transition. And then finally, Sarah Kelly is our 5'11 middle, and you know she's a special athlete. She's got an incredibly snappy arm. Um, she's one of the best players in the state of Minnesota last year, and you know it's just going to depend on how quickly she can adapt to what we do and the speed of the game and all the little nuances of what's going on. But I think she's going to find herself in the mix of you know what's happening pretty quickly here as well. Well, the uh, conference coaches poll came out uh, late early last week. Um, what was a surprise to me if I knew you guys were third, but still right in the mix of the top three, mm -hmm. uh, Concordia and Southwest ranking up there. Yep. Uh, do you guys use that as a bit of uh, uh, motivation, seeing that you uh, returned so much and, and uh, you know, had such a great season last year that you were still ranked third in that coaches' poll. You know, I guess you could use it as motivation. <laughs> I think the motivation for our program is just who we have to play night in and night out in our league and the teams you're up against to try to qualify for the NCAA playoffs. That is, in itself serves as motivation. You know, you look back on the year we had last year and going 20 and 0 in conference play, and I couldn't tell you what we were ranked in the preseason poll because really that preseason poll doesn't mean anything. It's just a, an opinion based on how teams did the year before and who are they returning. And it's hard to be offended when a team like Concordia, who is a seven-time national champion, is picked to be first. I mean, they return everybody. That's an incredible program. Southwest is a team that got out of our region and beat both Concordia and us to get to that um, you know, Elite Eight and finally to the National Final. How do you get offended when they return everybody as well? It's, you know, I'm not offended by it whatsoever. I think I'm honored to know in a league as good as ours that we are considered one of the, the teams that are going to be in the mix, hopefully. Um, you know, it's not going to surprise me to see the top three or four teams in our league ranked somewhere pretty high in the national poll as well. I think that's just the nature of, you know, volleyball in the Northern Sun. And, and so, you know, is it motivation? Not particularly. The motivation is the challenge that's ahead with the teams we have to play um, from top to bottom in our league. That's what really has to keep us focused every day. Uh, outside of the uh, NSIC schedule, you have some tough non-conference schedule. Uh, once again, a bunch of regional teams, which are also uh, going down to the Tampa Classic, uh, mm -hmm. where you'll face off against the defending national champions in Tampa. Yeah. Uh, guys, a tough, tough loss against them last year. Uh, is that? Are the girls kind of excited to get down there and maybe have another crack at Tampa? Yeah, I don't know if it's about being excited to get a crack at Tampa. I think it's more just excited to start the year with such a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's all sorts of different ways you can look at re um, scheduling those first two weekends, whether you're trying to go somewhere where you think you can get yourself some wins or going somewhere where you want to challenge yourself. You know, right or wrong, I felt like we needed to challenge ourselves, losing what we lost. We need to see where we're at. we got to prepare ourselves for the conference that we play in. And does that mean we might take some lumps? Yeah, it might. You know, is that the end of the world? No, I don't think it is. I think that's how you learn where your team's at and understand what you need to get better at so that by the end of the year when you're playing those big matches that count, you're more prepared to try to find ways to win them. So I think it's going to be a great challenge. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, certainly Tampa highlights the first weekend, but there's some other really good teams in there. And then the Indy tournament the next weekend, same thing. It wouldn't surprise me, I told the girls this in our meeting, that it wouldn't surprise me if six of the first eight matches we play are against top 25 teams based on the teams that we're talking about playing and who they return. And hey, what a great way to see where we're at and to challenge ourselves and to, to really understand where we need to get in the long run. So, you know, will I be kicking myself a little bit at some point in time for scheduling this tough? Maybe. Uh, but I think ultimately it's good for this, this team and this program to, to be tested like that. All right. Well, the, the uh, home season 
gets underway uh, uh, with the match against Minnesota Crookston. That'll be broadcast uh, locally on My9 on TV. Um, but what what should the team, uh, what are you hoping the team looks like when they get to that first home match? Uh, I, I hope we have some of our ball control things figured out. We have our personnel somewhat in place for what we think is going to be the, the rest of the season. So we have an idea of who's going to be passing and defending and giving our offense a chance to run. I hope we have some concept of you know who those pieces are that we're going to fit in for the Maddie and for the Katie Ledwell and you know who are going to answer the call there. And ultimately, I just hope there's a, a team chemistry and cohesion there. You know, when you talk about someone like Julie Rain, you talk about all the obvious volleyball. What you forget about is all the intangibles and the, just that innate leadership ability that someone like Julie had. And that's not easy to replace. I mean, those are the things that you forget about sometimes, how important they are, till they're gone and you realize, wow, that's a void. And so I just hope by then we have some of that figured out and we're starting to get down the path of figuring out who we're going to be by the end of the year. All right, well, that's all I have for you. Thanks for sitting down with us and uh, good luck on the season. Thank you, appreciate it.